Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, I'm just going to do another quick uh, review uh, idea of uh, what we have with uh, transformations of sine and cosine functions. Um, uh, you can see up here where it says, you know, we've got an A for amplitude and, and B is going to help us find our period and, and C is going to help us find our phase shift and, and D being our vertical shift and where our midline is. Uh, we, we went through this before, we went through it real quick, and then we had a, a, a mid-chapter test. So um, I want to go back and repeat this, get you guys back into the swing of things. You're going to do um, a worksheet to go back over this. Um, but I wanted to talk about what these things are and uh, how easy it is to go ahead and find uh, uh, some ideas that go with um, your sine and cosine functions when you're going to graph them or when you look at graphs of those functions and, and you can answer some questions just by looking at some simple ideas. All right, so uh, the cool thing about this is, you know, this is uh, y equals sine x and it's in blue. All right, so uh, the first thing we're going to talk about is amplitude. Amplitude is very super simple. I'm not going to do a, a, a ton of, of uh, amplitude things. Give me a second to, to jump over here and change the color. I'm going to try one that um, just shows two simple changes in amplitude. This is going to be y equals, um, let's go ahead and say, uh, negative 2 sine x, sine x, sorry about that, and then I'm going to say uh, y equals, uh, let's go ahead and say one half sine x. And since I'm already in green, I'm going to go ahead and, and use the, the one half sine x. And all that says is that instead of our amplitude being one, remember this is our sine wave and this is, has a, an amplitude of one. So it only reaches a maximum of one and a minimum of negative one. Um, so, but this one, uh, since it's half that value, then it's really only gonna reach its max of a half here. And it's in the same spot, so it's really only going halfway here. And it crosses through at the same spots. So even if I started back here, I guess I could do this whole thing. It's harder for me to draw freehand while I'm trying to talk to you guys at the same time. But I'm going to do my best. There we go. Cuts through and cuts back through. And you'll see that it is... Half the size, right? And then, of course, when we go back over here, let me grab this color and show you the difference. Now, when we talk about negatives, that means it, it just goes in the opposite direction. So when we go down here, it's, it's going to start downward and then come back upward. So it's going to be way up here, cuts back through there. Down, uh, should be down here, cuts through here, and way back up here, and then back down. And so um, it starts down, very steep, and it shoots way back up here, cuts through the origin. And of course, it's, it's much more curvy um, than I'm making it look. Uh, but I'm doing the best that I can uh, drawing freehand. So you see that when you do have the negative symbol like you have here, um, it just starts in the opposite. It moves in the opposite direction. Okay, and that's, that's basically amplitude. That's not such a difficult idea for you guys. Uh, so let's talk about period. So what if I have something that looks like, let me get rid of this stuff. Um, Let's get rid of this whole thing. Give me one quick second. And I'll get rid of this guy. All right, we'll come back here. 
Um, so let's see, like in your in your uh, homework previous, um, we had y we had y equals three sine. Then we had parentheses and we had two x plus pi. And we did that, all right? And so um, it was relatively simple to go ahead and find these other things um, where, uh, let me go ahead and just mark what these, these guys are. Three is A, two is B, um, and we have C, and there's no D in this one, but D would be out here, and so D would be plus whatever. D happens to be zero. That means that's the midpoint of the wave, or that's where the vertical shift is. It hasn't shifted up or down at all. So if we wanted to go ahead and graph this, we could graph it, um, but we, we'd need to find a couple of things first. So for amplitude A, we know it's three. It's right there in front of us. Um, if we wanted to find the period, remember the period is two pi divided by B. Um, so the period is two pi divided by B, which is two. So our period is equal to pi. Um, if we want to know what our frequency is, uh, frequency is frequency. There it is. Um, our frequency is one over our period or or we can write frequency as b over 2 pi. And it's, it basically ends up being the exact same thing, right? So if our period ended up being pi, um, this is 1 over pi. Or we could say it's uh, 2, which was b, over... 2 pi. Well, guess what? These 2's cancel out with each other. 2 divided by 2 is 1. And so we again would have 1 over pi. So um, what frequency says is, is the period of this wave is uh, pi radians. So we go through one whole sine wave in pi radians. Uh, this frequency says how much of your wave happens in a second or in a time period that, that we're measuring. Um, so it would only go um, this tiny amount in a second. So it takes a long time for this wave to happen um, if we're talking about seconds. Uh, which is, you know, not that, that big a deal. It's one-third, basically. A little over one-third of the wave happens uh, in a second. So it takes, uh, you know, pi seconds for this uh, to, to happen. All right. Um, the third thing was finding a vertical shift. The fourth thing was finding the vertical shift. And there is no vertical shift in the midline. Of course, again, is zero. Vertical shift is zero and midline is zero. So if we wanted to go ahead and graph this, um, I'm just going to try and rough out a graph here. Let's go ahead and use a different color. Yeah, that's fine. Make a line here. And I'm just going to make it way back over here. And I'm going to cheat. Right, um, I'm going to go ahead and make this 3 and make this negative 3. And I'm going to sp spread this out. I'm going to make this um, 
way out here, I'm going to make this pi over 2 and make this way out here pi. I want to see it and it's going to be a little difficult so those spots in between are going to be important because we're talking about the sine wave so um, if I wanted to go ahead and graph it, I think I'm using this color for it. It starts here at the origin jumps way up here to 3, cuts back down here, negative 3, and back here. And so this wave would come up, shoot down, and there, there you go. And that's, that's basically what it is. And there's no vertical shift, so it stays right here. If there was a vertical shift, say there was a vertical shift of, you know, what if there was a plus two? Um, actually, let's let's do that plus two in a different color for fun, and I'll show you what that graph looks like. Um, we'll do plus two in this color, and we'll say it's been shifted up two spaces. So here's you know one third, two thirds here. Um, it would be the same thing, only shifted up two spaces. So we would start here and it would just mo mimic it would mimic this thing and come back here and then this got a little bit too close i apologize for my rough draw but you understand the idea it's just shifted up that two spaces and, and there it is. Um, other than that, that's that's pretty much what you're looking at. Uh, the only other thing was making sure that if you see a negative sign here, uh, it moves in the opposite direction. All right, so that's your little bit of a review for uh, transformations of your sine and cosine functions. Go ahead and complete the uh, practice page that I put up for you. Uh, if you have any questions, please uh, send me an email. There are other videos online where you can track this stuff. Um, I should be able to uh, see some, some decent work now, now that you have a, a decent idea of what's going on. Um, I just want to take a quick look and, and see if there's anything weird going on here. No, no weird stuff going on. Uh, you should be good to go with uh, this practice page. Thanks, guys. Good luck.